Hey team, my name is Clint Hoagland and this is Creating Electronic Music with Chuck. Last time we talked about how to create the illusion of a physical space in your music using delays and reverbs. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about panning, and one of my favorite topics, randomization. As you know, most speaker setups use at least two speakers, and headphones generally have two speakers as well. We refer to these as the left channel and the right channel. In all of our tutorials so far, the sounds we've made have been equally loud in both channels. In Chuck, we aren't limited to that, however. There are a couple of ways we can choose to send our signals so that they are louder in one channel or the other. This is another way of creating a sort of fictitious impression of physical space in your recording, and it's called creating a stereo image. It's one more way to make your sounds more immersive. When you choose to change a sound's loudness in one channel relative to the other, we call that panning the sound, and it's easy to do in Chuck. Let's see how it works. We'll start with our standard test setup. This should look familiar to you if you've been following along so far. If you want, you can download it from the link below. Let's change the oscillator to a triangle so we can hear it better. Okay, so this sound is panned directly to the center of the stereo field. We know that the digital audio converter has both a left and a right channel, and it is, indeed it is really easy to access those directly. Instead of chucking to the DAC, chuck to the DAC dot left. Now let's play it back. The sound only comes from the left. Now let's try it with DAC dot right. The sound only comes from the right. This doesn't seem too useful until we remember what we talked about last time, applying parallel chains and delays. Let's make two new delays, and then we'll chuck the ADSR into each of them in turn. Then we'll chuck the first one into the left channel, and the second one into the right one. Now let's give them both a max of a beat. We'll give them both a gain of 0.5. We'll do the thing where we chuck each of them back into themselves. Finally, we'll set the delay of the first one to a beat divided by 4, and the second divided by 2. Now let's play with the beat duration so that we can hear it a little better. So that's one cheap way to get panning into your composition, but it's not very flexible. There's a UGen that lets you do anything you want, but in order to talk about it, we're going to have to introduce a new variable type, the float. So far, we've been using a numeric type called an int for our number variables. Int stands for integer, which you might remember from math as being a whole number that can be either positive or negative, but that has no fractions. A float is a number that can have fractions. The reason it's called a float is that the decimal point is stored in memory alongside the rest of the number, and that decimal point floats around and defines the size of that number. So now that we know what a float is, we can use it to control what's called the pan2 eugen. That's the eugen I mentioned before that gives us total control over panning our sounds. Let's go back to before we had these delays and stick a pan2 after the ADSR. Now we can set the pan value of that eugen to any value between negative 1 and 1 using decimal values. Negative 1 is hard left. 1 is hard right. And 0 is right up the center. Let's use a float variable in our loop and use our loop iterator to set our pan value. Okay, so now that we know about how panning works, let's talk about randomization. One of the things that you might have noticed is that, unlike most classic DAWs, all of the values we've been using in Chuck are represented numerically. In a classic DAW, all these values are probably numbers under the hood, but in Chuck they all stay numbers. You're working with numbers, which means that you can work with those numbers mathematically. One of the things that you can do with numbers is randomize them. This is a very powerful way to add some interest to your Chuck composition. Using random numbers, we can create Chuck compositions that never play the same way twice, and yet the way that the randomness is deployed remains completely under our control. Let's try it first with our pan control. Instead of chucking our loop iterator into the pan control, let's make a line that says math.random2f, parenthesis, negative one, comma one, end parenthesis, and chuck it into a float called pan value. Now chuck that into the pan two's pan value. To visualize what's happening, let's log that pan value to the console. Now let's run it. Every time we go through the loop, the pan value is set to a random value between negative 1 and 1, and you can hear how that sounds. 
The function itself comes from the math library, which is kind of like the standard library we used to get our MIDI to frequency function. The function random2f means give me a random number between these two numbers, and the f at the end chooses a float as the type of number that is returned. There's also a corresponding function that returns an int. That one is just called math.random2. Let's use that function to choose a random member of our chord. Now, let's use another one to choose our position. Remember way back in our basic music theory lesson when we said that musical notes repeat every 12 notes? Let's choose a number between 0 and 3, multiply that by 12, and chuck that into our position. Kinda neat, right? The music writes itself according to the boundaries we set for it. Let's do one more tweak. Divide the beat by a random number between 2 and 16, and then chuck that to the envelope's decay time. This makes the sound of our beeps a lot more interesting, especially if we add a little reverb. Using a randomness like this is called making aleatoric music, from the Latin word alia, which means dice. When you compose aleatoric music, you create a structure that you control, and then let randomness fill in the minute details. As you can see, Chuck is perfect for this purpose. There are all manner of ways that randomness can be deployed into your compositions, and we'll look into more of them in the future. In this tutorial, we talked about panning and how to use randomness in your Chuck compositions. In the next tutorial, we'll talk about playing samples using the Sound Buff class.